Today we will show how to find the internal force diagrams for a beam carrying a uniform load. We will follow the same procedure as done with the concentrated loads, except for the bending moment diagram. The main effect of the uniform load appears in the bending moment diagram. If a beam is loaded with a uniform load, and we calculate the internal moments at two points on the beam, we cannot obtain the diagram by just connecting the two values using a straight line. The existence of the uniform load will cause the bending moment diagram between these two points to be a second degree curve, a parabola. In the next example, we will show in detail how to draw this parabola. The shown beam is loaded with two uniform loads as shown and it is required to draw the internal force diagrams. The first step is to calculate the reactions. Then, we continue by calculating the internal forces at the critical points on the beam. We start at support A by evaluating the internal forces just to the right of point A. As detailed in a previous lecture, we calculate the internal forces at a point by dividing the beam into two parts at that point and using the forces in only one of the two parts to evaluate the internal forces. We are free to use any one of the two parts, but take care that the sign convention for the left part is opposite to that of the right part. For the current point, we will work on the left part, so we will display the sign convention on the left part for our reference. Because the beam is not subjected to any horizontal force, the normal force will be zero for the whole beam. The shear force is the sum of all the vertical forces in the left part. We only have Ya in the left part, which is equal to 10.5 kN, so the shear force will be positive 10.5 kN. We draw this value to scale on the shear force diagram. To find the value of the internal bending moment, we take the moment of all the forces located at the left part about the considered point, which is point A. The moment about point A will be zero because all the forces in the left part pass through A. Next, we evaluate the internal forces at the next critical point, which will be point C, located at the end of the first uniform load. Because there is no concentrated load at point C, the internal forces just to the left and just to the right of point C will be identical, so we do not need to evaluate the internal forces at the left or right of point C. We just evaluate them at point C. We follow the same procedure by dividing the beam into two parts at point C, and we will use the left part. To simplify the calculations, we need to convert the distributed load in the left part to an equivalent concentrated force, which will be 12 kN, located at 1.5 meter from point A. The normal force will be zero, as before. The shear force will be the sum of all the vertical forces, which is positive Ya and the negative 12 kN equivalent force, giving a value of negative 1.5 kN for the shear. We draw the value in the shear diagram and connect it to the value at point A using a straight line. The value of the moment will be calculated by taking the moment of all the forces in the left part about point C. The left part contains two forces, Ya, which is multiplied by an arm of 3 meters rotating in the positive direction, and the 12 kN equivalent force multiplied by an arm of 1.5 meter rotating in the negative direction. The resulting moment about C will be positive 13.5 kN meter. The calculated value is drawn on the diagram at point C. However, we cannot connect this value to the value at point A using a straight line because the existence of the uniform load causes the diagram between points A and C to be a parabola as will be detailed next. Let us name the point that represents the moment at point A, point 1, and the point which represents the moment at point C, 
point 2 as shown. First, we will connect point 1 and point 2 using a straight line. This line is a construction line and does not represent the final diagram. Next, we bisect the line at point 3. From point 3 we go up 4.5 kNm in a direction perpendicular to the beam to locate point 4. This value of 4.5 kNm is calculated from the formula W L squared over 8, where W is the value of the load and L is the distance between points A and C, the distance in which the parabola is drawn. From point 4 we go up an identical distance of 4.5 kNm to locate point 5. Next, we draw three lines to act as tangents to the parabola. The first line connects point 1 and 5, the second line connects point 2 and 5, and the third line passes through point 4 and is parallel to the line 1, 2. Finally, we draw the parabola as a curve tangent to the three lines and passing through points 1, 2, and 4 as shown. As a confirmation and for further practice, we will repeat the calculation of the internal forces at point C, but now using the part to the right of point C. First, we will convert the uniform load in the right part to an equivalent concentrated force, which will be 6 kN, located 1.5 meter from point C. We will display the sign convention of the right part for our reference. The normal force will be zero as before. The shear force will be the sum of two forces, YB, which is negative 7.5 kN, and the positive 6 kN equivalent force, giving a value of negative 1.5 kN for the shear at C, which is the same value evaluated earlier using the left part. The bending moment is calculated by taking the moment of all forces in the right part about point C, which is YB multiplied by an arm of 3 meters rotating in the positive direction, and the 6 kN equivalent force multiplied by an arm of 1.5 meter rotating in the negative direction, giving a net value of positive 13.5 kN meter for the moment at C which is identical to the value calculated previously using the left part. Next, we move to the point on the left of the roller support at B. For this location, we will work on the right part, so we will display the sign convention for the right part for our reference. The normal force will be zero. Only one vertical force is present, which is the reaction YB with a value of 7.5 kN upwards, so the shear will be negative 7.5 kN, because positive on the right side is downwards. The value of the shear is drawn on the diagram at point B and connected to the value at point C with a straight line. The bending moment at B will be zero because all the forces in the right part pass through point B. Next, we connect the moment at point C with that at point B using a parabola in the same way as detailed in the previous step between A and C. The value of WL squared over 8 in this case will be calculated as 2 kN per meter multiplied by the square of 3 meters divided by 8 giving a value of 2.25 kN meter. After connecting all the calculated values, the final diagrams are produced as shown.